Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being with us today. I want to start out by giving you the appropriate image of why we do what we do. One of our undercover detectives went to an app pretending to be a 14-year-old girl. He simply showed a empty chair on a beach and said, spring break and nothing to do. Within minutes, freaks, deviants, had downloaded body part pictures to what they believed was a 14-year-old girl, and she did nothing but show the picture of an empty beach chair and said nothing to do but spring break. These freaks and these deviants are looking for our children every day online. And as a result of that, our Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force was put together once again with 12 different agencies as well as the State Attorney's Office to prosecute and we focused on the very sickest of the sick. They showed up with candies and condoms, sex toys and pregnancy tests. Five said they were married. One worked security for Disney. One worked as a janitor for Discovery Cove. One was a former firefighter and sent his photograph in his uniform out as a way to impress the young girls. One was a volunteer assistant football coach at Central Florida Christian Academy. One was a customer service manager for Alaska Airlines, according to him. Two worked for Publix. One worked for Florida Hospital in Orlando as a clinical al analyst. One worked for Mullinex Ford. They worked in all different lines of business, and they had one thing in common. They were child predators. They were coming for children as young as 10 years old and as old as 14, and their goal was to attack children. That's why we talk about the parents have to help us. There are now apps now that conceal apps. It's getting more difficult every day to find and track these very dangerous predators. But there's one thing for sure. They will not stop trying to track your children, your young children online. I'm going to go through these folks that we arrested for the next few minutes so that you'll see the person that looks, in some cases, normal on the outside, and on the inside, they're disturbed. They have this frightening ability to attack children as young as 10 years of age. And we'll start with Keith Ingalls. He's a mechanic. He's the formal fi former firefighter. He sends this picture out so he can impress the very young girls. He would tell them during the chats that remember to erase the text, erase the text, erase the text. They all knew it was wrong, they all knew they were committing crime, and they knew that they were attacking children. He wanted to have sex with a child of only 14, a little girl. And then there was Joshua Sutherland. He wanted to have sex with a 12-year-old girl, and that's what he said as he accosted our undercover, who he thought was 12. He wanted to teach her how to have sex because she was only 12 and she needed to know how to do it correctly. When he was arrested, then he says, it's a dumb, stupid mistake. No, it's not a dumb, stupid mistake. You're a dumb, stupid person trying to attack a 12-year-old child. And here's our customer service manager from Alaska Airlines. He lives in Alaska. He was in the Orlando area. He wanted to have sex with a 13-year-old male. And guess what? 
He was so appreciative of having sex with a 13-year-old male. Guess what he brought for himself and the 13-year-old child? LSD and cocaine. Let me say that again if you missed it. LSD and cocaine is what this guy brought when he showed up thinking he was going to have sex with a little 13-year-old boy. Pedro Portillo is 13, wanted to have sex with a 13-year-old child. He is a prep manager for Mullinex Ford. He brought Skittles. You hear me? He brought candy. He brought candy because he was going to meet a child. And the conversation was all about having sex. Very nasty conversation. Tyler James Knight wanted to have sex with a 14-year-old male. He has a criminal history that includes assault with injuries, domestic violence with bodily injury, false report of a crime, aggravated battery. He's married, by the way. And guess what? He's on food stamps. So while you're working and paying taxes, for a program that's to go to the very needy and those that really need help, he's taking your food stamps and coming to have sex with children. At least he thought he was. Preston Lee Bosquet, he wanted to have sex with a 14-year-old child. He's a student at em Embry-Riddle. He works as a clerk for Trans Am Aviation Ser Services. He talked extremely nasty online to what he thought was a little, a little girl. He's married. His wife was away in Puerto Rico. What a great time to accost a child while your wife's away. I wonder how she thinks about that. Listen, you're married to a dangerous guy. If you didn't know it already, you do now. Mahish Radhakishan, he wanted to have sex with a 14-year-old female. He's married. His wife and child were in India on holiday. He's a program developer for Temenos. And he would send stuff to this little child, this 14-year-old, saying, listen, make sure you delete your messages. Make sure you delete your messages. And by the way, when I arrive... Please make sure your hair is wet. And he would tell her exactly what he wanted to do that was very ugly. A child. He's in the county jail. The only wet hair he'll see now are other criminals. Robert Michael Gordon, volunteer football coach, works for Publix. Wanted to have sex with a 14-year-old girl. Talked nasty. Showed up. Keep in mind, folks, these people showed up. You follow what I'm saying? They showed up at a house to walk into a house, not knowing what was on the other side of the door, thinking it was a 14-year-old child. Could have been an angry dad. But in this case, it was law enforcement officers from around central Florida who wanted to make a difference. These detectives and deputies did a fantastic job. My, my team is simply the best at working these undercover operations. The reason we do this is to intercede before they get to children because after they get to children, the damage is done. And then there's a 60-year-old. He's also taken public assistance. That's right. We're paying him. He's on public assistance while he's trying to find a 10-year-old. Listen to me, a 10-year-old child to have sex. You know what his response was when we interviewed him? His response was, oh, this case will never stick because I asked y'all if you were cops and you lied to me. Well, we're telling you the truth today. We're cops and you're going to prison for a long time for trying to have sex with a 10-year-old girl. It's one thing for sure. We know he's a sexual predator. 
He's certainly not a lawyer, doesn't know a thing about the law. But he's going to learn. 14-year-old female, Alejandro Penaloza wanted to have sex with this 14-year-old female. He sent nude photos of his body parts. Oh, by the way, he's married. If his wife doesn't know, your husband's sending nude photos ostensibly of his body parts to 14-year-old children. That is until we arrested him and put him in jail. How about Jaron Jolly James? Want to have sex with a 14-year-old female? He's wife. He's married to his wife. He told his wife he was going to the 7-Eleven. I think he was looking for girls between 7 and 11. But what he found was undercover detectives. He works at the Florida Hospital in Orlando as a clinical analyst. So his wife thinks he's going down the street to the store. And hours later, obviously, she figures out he's under arrest because he has snuck out of the house to have sex with a child. And here's Michael Dean Thompson, who came all, all the way from Ponte Vedra to have sex with a 14-year-old child. And right along with all the evidence we have is his nasty talk about hooking up with children. How about Michael Fernandez? He also wanted to have sex with a 10-year-old girl. We have his gun here that was loaded and in the glove compartment of his car. He had the magazine, which was loaded with ammunition, in his pocket. And when asked during the interviews, how young a child do you fantasize about having se sex with? He said, mm, about the age of my sis. What? My little sister? Well, how old is she? Uh, she's eight. This is a very nasty guy. As you can well imagine, there will be complex investigations occurring to make sure that his little sis is safe and has not been attacked by him. We have no evidence at this time that she's a victim of any crime. But that's how deviant and demented they, they are. Jeffrey Binder thought he was coming to have sex with a 14-year-old. And during the interview, his big concern was, he says, now I have to tell people at my work and my family that I was arrested for soliciting sex from a 14-year-old. Jeffrey worked security for Disney, and he was proud of the picture that he posted, not with the chats, but on his Facebook about being a Disney employee. This is a security guy. This is a guy who's supposed to protect children at Disney. And when he's not working, he's trying to have sex with 14-year-old children. Well, you're right, Jeffrey. Your work and your family is going to know that you tried to have sex with a 14-year-old child. However, you don't have to tell them because I am. And then there's author Joseph Nelson from Discovery Cove. He's a janitor. He wanted to have sex with a 13-year-old girl. He was high, and it just seemed like a good idea. Now, we had to blank out some of his quote. He was high, and it just seemed like a good idea. Well, author, seems like a good idea to us to put you in prison for a long time for trying to have sex with a 13-year-old child. And then there's Christopher S Smith, who wanted to have sex with a 13-year-old child. He has a nice criminal history. And he did admit, well, I made a stupid decision, a real stupid decision. Here's our poster child. So why is Larry Treharn a poster child? Let me give you the story of how this occurred. Our detective said from the very beginning, this guy was very, very scary and very, very weird.